Hey sister friend, welcome back to episode 33 where I'm doing the second episode specifically for the Bloom Room Confession Sessions. Oh, so if you missed the first one of this, I mean, this is like the most awkward thing. However, I know that God tells us to confess our sins. And in fact, in James, uh, what was it? James 5, 16, it says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so I come to you with this because truth be told, when I first started my podcast, I was going to model it after my podcast coach and now dear friend, Steph Gass. If you haven't checked her out on the Mompreneur podcast, go over there and do that. She's incredible. She's amazing. She's become one of my dearest friends and I loved her model. She, you know, shares episodes where she's teaching and she's talking, but then she also shares episodes of her client calls. And I love that because you get to get a real insider look of what she does with her clients. I thought I'm going to do that too, because that'd be so powerful to show other people what I do in my coaching sessions and it will be super authentic and they can hear the breakthrough and all the things. However, uh, as I started to ask clients if they wanted to do that, I, I will say 99% of my clients say yes, because of course, you know, they get exposure and they get to get on my podcast and it's, you know, awesome. I just, the more I thought about it, I thought, oh gosh, these are like really intimate things, like really intimate. And, and most of the time, you know, it comes down to, uh, it's, well, a lot of it's mindset issues and trauma in people's lives or different things that people have overcome or, you know, all these things, but then a lot of it comes down to sin. And not that I can't do it still, but I think the Lord was like, Hey, why don't you go ahead and share with other people where you, where you've struggled and where I've brought you breakthrough and where I've brought you, you know, from your trials to triumphs, test to testimony, test victim to victor. So I don't know. I, I really felt like this was a great way for me to say, hey, I struggle too. I sin too. I think sometimes we can think people have it all figured out when they are, you know, we think pastors are perfect. Well, that's not true. And I'm not a pastor, but, you know, I think if we see other people living a certain way, we can put them on the pedestal. So here is my, well, one, following James 5, 16 and telling you, hey, I'm going to confess my sins to you. But this is not uh, just so that, oh, you pray for me so that I can come through it. But it's to really show you that I struggle with things and that perhaps the Lord wants to convict you as well. So I have had some really good feedback from the first series in this uh, in this little mini series. And it blesses me so much to know that the Lord speaks to you guys. So if you haven't, leave, an, leave a review on the podcast if you haven't already on iTunes. Uh, or send me a message, or better yet, go into the Garden of Favor Bloom Society community and share with other people what the Lord speaks to you through these through these episodes. It's uh, it's just again, it's such a blessing to my heart to know that hey, I'm not sharing this just out of you know telling everybody my problems, but really that the Lord teaches you something as well. So here it is at the end of the day. Um, I the Lord showed me that I had many idols in my life. And uh, I grew up in church and I had heard, you know, obviously one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not make any other gods before me. I think when we read in the Bible, we can see, you know, that a lot of people literally have little statutes or, you know, not statutes, statues or little mini wooden idols or something, you know. And I mean, I know people still have that to today, but I don't struggle with that at all. I don't have little mini things that I pray to or that I look at that I think is 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 taking the place of God or anything like that. However, what the Lord showed me is that there are so many more other things that can become idols in our life that can become really at the end of the day, an idol is, is anything that becomes more important than God. Um, and I love this definition from uh, Kim, Tim Keller. I haven't read his book, Counterfeit Gods, but I did come across this. He describes an idol as anything more important to you than God, anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God, and anything that you seek to give you what only God can give. I'm just going to let you marinate on that for a second. You know, I think it's obvious that if somebody thinks that there is another God besides the creator of the universe, then that's one thing. But how often are idols uh, in in your everyday life that you might not even realize that have become idols? What is taking up more of your heart? What are you thinking about more? What are you imagining about more than God? What are you spending more time reading about? What are you spending more time doing? What are you spending more time uh, you know, working toward? 
What are you seeking more than what God can give you? I'm just going to give you some examples of this so that perhaps the Lord speaks to you uh, the way that he spoke to me. Because I was like, oh my goodness, when he started to reveal to me the different idols that I had in my life, like money and success and my business, my business was, it was by far my biggest idol, my business. It consumed my mind. It consumed my time so much that I was sacrificing my family and my sanity and everything for success. And so much of that was wrapped up in the Lord, what he showed me was pride. But then also he was showing me that money became such an idol that I was finding my security in money. And I don't know if you have heard, you know, financial freedom, that phrase financial freedom. I don't know. Uh, I, I, the, what the Lord showed me in that there is no such thing as financial freedom. Listen, you could have a, a billion dollars today and it can be gone tomorrow. Well, do you still think you have financial freedom? I don't know. I'll tell you, when I was making in a month what I made in a salary as a teacher, that I felt like I had way more to lose, way more to lose. So much that I was making my business an idol to figure out, God, how do I keep this? Thank you for the blessings, but how do I keep earning this from you? Um, you know, so I'm just going to give you a few food for thoughts. Yourself, you know, have you become self-obsessed? I think in in our selfie world, it's easy to become. We are working on ourselves so much more and building ourselves up so much more than, uh, you know, really spending time with the Lord. So have you have you yourself become an idol? I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily struggle with that one. Um. But that comes with like identity, like security. Are you finding your security in money? Are you finding your security in relationships? Are you finding security in your own strength? Anything other than God, it, it, that, God is your security. But about, you know, approval of others and uh, the likes on your social media. Like, are you working more toward that and obsessing over that more than the approval of God? Oh, I have been guilty of all of these in some way, shape, or form. Relationships. You know, I mean, relationships with friends, with our, with our children. As a mom, you know, I see, I, I see, you know, my mom, like, sacrificed everything for us. But, and I, I am so grateful for her for that. But I think there's a, there is a line that people can cross to become, that becomes an idol. Your kids become an idol. What about success? Money, wealth. The world tells us we need more things. Our health. You know, I think you can become more obsessed with your health. Like going to, listen, if you work out, and this is what God convicted me of this. Again, I'm only saying this from a, God convicted me of, yeah, you're willing to do an hour workout. And read it, read 30 minutes of a personal development book, but you are not willing to sit with me for an hour. And again, I don't think it has to start out that way. I don't think you have to start reading your Bible for an hour and that proves that you're a good person. No, God just wants intimacy with you. But are are we doing it are we doing other things more than our, our relationship with God? I don't know. I mean, there are so many things that become idols. Knowledge can become idols. Like, no information. Comfort. Are we seeking our comfort in food? Then that's become an idol. Are we seeking our comfort in relationships? Then that's an idol. Are we seeking our comfort in our money? That's an idol. Oh. I mean, as I'm saying these out loud, I'm like, the God is still revealing to me some idols that I've made in my life. So really an idol, again, it is anything that becomes more important to us than God. Anything that absorbs our our attention, our time, our heart, our imagination more than God. Anything that we seek to give us what only God can give. And I'm going to leave this one with you too. I realized that I was positioning myself in a way to make myself an idol for other people. With building a business online, you know, that was part of what I would teach people. Hey, you, you want to make people want what you have. I don't know, but I had to repent of that and say, God, anytime I made people want anything other than you 
for self glory. Like not, again, I think, you know, there's okay to share your transformation with people and, and show people like, oh, I've lost weight and I've been come, become healthier. There's nothing wrong with that. So don't, don't hear me wrong on that, but it's okay to brag on God of, of what he's done for you. And I don't even think there's anything wrong with sharing your accolades with your business and that. But I think it comes down to the end of the day, like, are we doing this to equip God's kingdom and to help God's you know, people and to grow God's kingdom? Or are we doing it to increase our own empire and build our empire? I'm sure if you've checked on Pinterest or you've been scrolling through Instagram or Facebook for any amount of time, you have seen, I'm just a girl boss building her own empire. I don't know. I got a question about that. Should we be building our own empire? I mean, I don't know. In Exodus, it tells us to, or not Exodus. Um, it, I don't even know what the scripture is, but it tells us, you know, not to um, grow things on earth. Like we shouldn't be storing our treasures on earth where moth and dust grow up, but right, we store our treasures in heaven. I don't know, sis. This is like, this is like heart to heart coffee conversations. Like, are you building your business to grow your own empire or is it to really build God's kingdom and equip God's children in a better way? Again, business can do all that too. But I would just ask you to allow, ask the Lord, God, what are the idols? Holy Spirit, show me what idols I have in my life that are taking precedence over you, that I'm trying to find my worthiness, my joy, my comfort, my freedom, whatever, in place of you. Ugh. The enemy loves it. He loves it. I'm like biting my nails in it. And that's terrible, terrible. If you heard that, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm even comfortable saying these things out loud because <sighs> the Lord is convicting me as I say these things. But I think it needs to be said because I think as we build our businesses and try to do business God's way, it's important to make sure that these things don't become idols in our life. Our success, our platform, our finances, our you know reputation, anything. And I just pray that your heart is in a, in a wants nothing, doesn't desire anything more than a relationship with God. And I pray that over myself too, because there are many shiny objects that can you know that are vying for our attention that that are that are good. They're even good things, right? I mean, like. Making money is a good thing. And I think there's a, there's that, a lot of people think that money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. It's the love of the money is the root of all evil. But the Lord just shows me that you love money. And really that, uh, it's a whole other, whole other call, but, um, or podcast episode, but that if you are loving anything more than, or you're finding freedom in anything more than, or comfort or anything, just like that. Can we just get rid of that today? All right. I'm going to wrap this up because I could keep going on. But this is this is it. Like, what idols do you have in your life? Oh, Father, we thank you so much for, for showing us the parts of our heart, the, the weeds in our garden, not to shame us. But, Lord, you do this to claim us as your children. That we see wicked people doing wicked things and they have zero conscience, zero, uh, zero discernment, zero they don't feel bad but God as, as your children Lord thank you for convicting us and again not to shame us but to help us to pull the weeds so that we can make room for your goodness and your kindness and your love and your favor and your abundance the way that you designed it nothing that you know we can get anywhere else but other than you God thank you for showing me the idols that I had in my life and even on this episode, Lord, thank you for showing me the idols that I have in my life. And God, I just repent of that now that I find satisfaction in anything other than and, and than intimacy with you. And that I find, again, not that satisfaction and things are wrong, but that anything trumps my relationship with you, that anything trumps my comfort from you, that anything trumps my freedom from you. And my love from you and all the things that you give. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for revealing to us the things that are taking place that you, you deserve the space for. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.